יפה היום, שבת שלום, מה יפה היום, שבת שלום. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I'm Rabbi Barry Silver, and on behalf of Congregation Lador Vador, it's my pleasure to welcome you to our celebration of Shabbat. Now, today we are able to decide which service and which type of service we would like to hear on Shabbat, or we could choose none of the above. With modern technology, we can now find a service that is Orthodox or Reform or Reconstructionist, from the greatest synagogues of all time, the largest ones in New York City, from a synagogue in Bombay, India, you can choose whatever you like. If you're trying to find a congregation that will tell you what you want to hear to make you feel good, even though it's not true, that will insult your intelligence, but hopefully make you feel something that they want you to believe, this is not the right celebration for you. But if you're looking for a form of Judaism that respects your intelligence, that is consistent with science and common sense, that actually believes in the goals of Judaism, emet v'tzedek, truth and righteousness, you've come to the right place. Not only are our Shabbat celebrations consistent with science and reason, we also have innovative music which you will hear tonight, and also a type of Judaism that celebrates nature as the greatest evidence of a power greater than ourselves. If this type of Judaism appeals to you, then I hope you will not only watch, but tell all of your friends that they can find a type of Judaism which at last combines the greatest elements of religious tradition as well as science and reason. And now, let the celebration of Shabbat begin. As their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light, so may we, in our own way, be among those who kindle light. blessed with joy. May we be blessed with light. May we be blessed with peace. The beginning of Shabbat is marked by reciting a benediction sanctifying the day. Kiddush means sanctification. It is the prayer recited over the wine through which Jews proclaim the uniqueness of Shabbat. Sweet wine has long been used to make Shabbat just a little sweeter. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei pari hagafen. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kiddushanu b'mitzvotav v'ratzavanu, V'shabbat kadosho, v'yahava u'v'ratzon, Inchilanu, Zikaron lamaase barehi ki hu yom tachila la mikrad he kodesh le hechelitzi hiyaha mitzrayim ki vanu vacharta yotanu ki dashta mikol ha'ahamim 
Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Tonight, I celebrate Shabbat with you. It seems the only natural thing to do. Tonight, true happiness will find us. Our sages will remind us how to be kind to you as a Jew. Tonight, I celebrate Shabbat with you. And soon, the whole world will see brand new tonight we will soon discover our love for one another and to live as a Jew tonight tonight I celebrate Shabbat with you And the setting sun Opens up new breakthroughs Tonight there'll be no distance Between us What I want most to do Is to live as a Jew Tonight Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem Kevod, Shem Kevod Malchuto, Le'olam Va'ed. 
Baruch Shem Kevod, Shem Kevod, Malchuto, Leolam Va'ed. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Ve'ahavtaha et Adonai Elohecha, Bechol levavcha, Uvchol nafshecha, Uvchol meodecha, Ve'hayu ha'devarim ha'ele, Asher anochi mitzavecha, Hayom alevavecha, Veshinantam levanecha, Ve'ribahar tabam, Veshivtecha bebeitecha, uvlechtecha vaderech, uvshoch becha, uvkumecha, uksharetam laod ayadecha, vehayu letotofot beinecha, uchtavtam al mezuzot beitecha, uvisharecha. Lemahan tiskeru. Vasitem et kol mitzvotai, vitem kedoshim leloheichem. Ani Adonai Eloheichem, asher hotzeti etchem me'eretz mitzrayim, liot lachem lelohim. Ani Adonai Eloheichem, Adonai Eloheichem. Amen. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu, Velohe Avotenu, Veimotenu, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Velohe Yaakov, Elohe Sara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel. Velohe Lea, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor Vehanora, El El Yon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, Vekonei Hakol, Vezocher Chasdei Avot Veimahot, Umevi Geula Livne Veneihem, Lemaan Shemo Veahava, Melech Ozer Umoshia Umagain, Baruch. Ata Adonai, Magain Avraham, Ve'ezra Tzarah. It's been said that a mind is a terrible thing to waste. In Judaism, we agree with these sentiments completely. We believe that the human mind is the greatest gift of human beings. And we also believe that if we use its prodigious abilities, and apply them in the light of reason and Jewish ideals and values. We have the potential, each one of us, to enjoy a wonderful, productive, enjoyable life. One which not only is a benefit to ourselves, but to others. With this in mind, we now have an opportunity to apply all the beautiful sentiments and the noble ideals from our tradition to our own personal lives as we engage in a few moments of silent meditation.
us sing and let us say Amen. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamavorach, Baruch Adonai Hamavorach Leolam Vahed, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bachar Banu Mikor Hamim, Vinatan Lanu et Torato, Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah, Amen. Our Torah reading the Shabbat is from the book of Deuteronomy, a passage called Ekev. Beata Yisrael, Madonai Elohecha, Shoel Mi Imcha. And now, Israel, what is it that the Lord your God asks of you? Ki im lir a et Adonai Elohecha la lechet bechul de rachav. Only to fear the Lord your God and walk in his ways. A modern understanding of fear, the word also has been, has evolved to mean to revere. To revere the creative power in this universe, and to have respect for life and all living things. And to love life and creation. And to cherish not only your life, but the lives of all living things with all your heart and with all your soul. To follow God's commandments and his statutes, where in modern parlance, mitzvot has evolved from commandments to good deeds, to do good deeds, and to live a life of following the righteous path. Which I command you this day for goodness. For this creative power rules over the heavens of the heavens, rules over the earth as well as everything in it. And God singled out your forefathers in order to come close to them and to love them and also to love his descendants. Among all the peoples, he has chosen the Jewish people. Therefore, Open up your hearts to this power within you that cherishes you and that loves you. Hu Elohei Eloheichem, v'adonei Adoneichem, ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibor v'hanora, asher lo yisah panim v'lo yikach shochad. This is the God of all gods, the power of all powers, who is above pettiness, who takes no bribes, who shows no injustice, towards anyone. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu turat emet, v'chayolem natah bitochenu. Baruch atah Adonai, noten atorah. One of the greatest orators and intellectuals of our time, sadly who passed away 
Uh, about a decade ago, Christopher Hitchens, a confirmed atheist and a hero of mine, observed that Nietzsche felt that God was dead and Freud said that God was dad. I would say that my father believed that God was deeds, that a power that emanates throughout the universe encourages us to do good deeds and that we can see a powerful force in our actions and what we do. This passage of Eketh teaches us how to get in touch with that power and to use it in order to improve not only our lives, but the lives of others. My father also used to say that anyone wrapped up in himself makes a very small package. Indeed, the entire purpose of Judaism is to extend our concerns and ourselves beyond our own physical self and to connect us not only with other people, but with all living things and to link us with the cosmos itself, past, present, and future. This is a very noble undertaking, an ambitious one, but Judaism claims that we have the ability to accomplish that, to be a link in all living things. How? By seeing our purpose to understand our place in the universe and to advance human progress and goodness one step further. That gives our life meaning. And so this passage of Eketh helps us to understand how to do that. However, if taken literally, it will greatly retard human progress. It's only when we try to understand it from a rational point of view that there is any hope at all that it can help us. Why is that? Well, the passage starts out by saying something which is patently false. It might make us feel good to believe this, but it's false. It says that if we listen and follow God's ways, everything that we want will take place. There will be absolutely no infertility whatsoever throughout the land. Not only in no human infertility, but also the, the animals will also all be fertile. Everything we plant, we will reap abundant harvest. Everything we desire will occur. There will be no disease. Everything will work out the way we want. Obviously, that prophecy has never happened. It also says that if we spurn God and turn on him and reject him and, heaven forbid, worship other gods, then everything will go wrong. There will be no fertility. If we do have crops, it will be eaten and consumed by our enemies. The enemies will come in and wipe us out and will be destroyed and exiled. Is this true also? I don't think so. I think whether we prosper or not has a lot to do with other things, not whether we worship God or not. Certainly Christians and Muslims have been worshiping their gods for a long time. It hasn't really worked out so well for them, nor for us. So what does the passage actually mean and why did people believe such things? Well, imagine yourself living a few thousand years ago. They saw people with disease. They had no idea why that happened. They saw earthquakes, floods, tornadoes, hurricanes, drought, which meant death, widespread death across the land. They'd see enemies come in and annihilating the Jewish people and others. They had no explanation whatsoever. This is terrifying to have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow and no control over it for human beings was an awful, dreadful state of affairs. Therefore, they sought an answer. They sought comfort and a bad answer. A false answer is better than no answer at all. And if they could get themselves to believe it, it would provide comfort. So they wanted to believe there was a power out there, a God that they should worship. And if they just said the right things and made the right propitiations, everything would work out well. The passage is called Ekev. Ekev means heal, or if you do this, then on the heels of this, something else will happen. It was actually our first effort to understand cause and effect, to try to figure out what can we do to exert some control over life. That desire, that goal 
of understanding how the universe works and trying to work in alignment with it in order to produce a better life for us and others. That goal still exists. We still have it. We, we stand on the shoulders of our ancestors who sought to understand what was going on. But now through science and reason, we know that it's a little different than they thought. It's not worshiping a particular God and, and following a lot of laws that don't make any sense. It's understanding natural laws, physical laws, the laws of human nature, the laws of the climate. If we ex put a lot of carbon into the atmosphere, horrible things will happen. If we despoil the earth, the crops won't grow. If the, the natural beauty, if it's destroyed, will create a terrible condition on earth. If we treat other people poorly, it's going to come back upon us. If we create a world of justice, good things will happen. Cause and effect. These things are true. It is real. We can exert control over ourselves. The Torah reading also says this. It says that God chose the Jewish people because he loved our ancestors and he loved us. Is this true? Literally, no. Uh, even if there was a, a personal God, which doesn't square with science, a personal God wouldn't go around choosing one group of people in Bronze Age Canaan over everybody else. It doesn't make any sense. But what is true? The Jewish people have brought about incredible blessings on earth. We've achieved some remarkable outstanding contributions. The greatest scientists, the greatest philanthropists, the, the greatest minds, the greatest revolutionaries, people who have shaped human thought and behavior have been Jewish. Is this because God chose us? No. It's because we chose to try to understand the power that governs this universe, to try to understand how can we be more loving? How can we be more peaceful? How can we be more aligned with our highest nature? How can we achieve the greatest accomplishments that we're capable of and that our people are capable of? How can we be a blessing on this earth? The Jewish people have been dedicated, committed to this goal. And because of that, it is as if we were chosen for greatness. We did the choosing and we continue to choose. The Torah in Ekev talks about God annihilating other people that are our enemies. God wiping them out and the Jewish people trouncing them and killing them. If we take this literally, we will be no better than all of those empires that came and destroyed us. It is only by using reason and a, and a non-literal interpretation that the passage can make sense and also that the passage can help us be a light to the nations. The way to defeat an enemy, the best way, is to make them our friend. We saw it in the passage of Bilaam. He was asked to curse the Jews. He saw the Jews living in peace and harmony and love. And instead of cursing, he blessed us because he was persuaded by the beauty of how we lived our lives. Yes, my friends, it is true. The Jews have been a blessing on this earth. We have brought about wonderful things, but that is because we've clung to ideals and values and Rahmanas and Siddiq and righteousness and truth, not because we followed a bunch of rituals and rules that don't really make much sense anymore. This passage also has something absolutely sublime. At Towards the end of the passage, it says that we should love the stranger. And the stranger means Hagel, and Hebrew means the immigrant, a person of a different nationality, someone who is different than we are. Love them in tangible ways, not just to say I love you, but to provide their food and clothing. My friends, Ekev teaches us how to connect with the cosmos, how to avoid being wrapped up on ourselves and instead be wrapped up in a higher purpose. And in that way, we bring joy not only to others, but to ourselves. Let us use Eketh, law of cause and effect, in order to harness the power in the universe 
that gives us the ability to transform the way we are into a way we could be and transform the world into how it is, into the world dreamed of by our prophets, a world of peace, of justice, and of love. Shabbat Shalom. Im titsu, im titsu, in zo agada, in zo agada. Liot dam chofshi be'artzenu be'eretz, Zion b'rushalayim titsu. Im titsu in zo agada, in zo agada. Liot dam chofshi be'artzenu be'eretz. Zion Virushalayim Alenu l'shabach l'adon hakol L'atid k'dula l'yotzer b'reshit Shelo ha'sang k'yei ha'ratzot V'lo ha'samanu k'mishpechot ha'adama שלא שם חלקנו כהם, וגהור עלינו ככל המונם. ואנחנו קוראים ומשתחווים ומודים לפני מלך מלכי המלכים הקדוש ברוך הוא. ונאמר, והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ ביום ההוא, ביום ההוא, יהיה אדוני אחד ושמו, ושמו, ושמו אחד. Congregation on the Door of a Door was founded by my father, Rabbi Sam Silver, and some dedicated individuals who believe that even though he was 85 years old, he still had much to contribute, as all of our seniors are still able to contribute much, and with their wisdom, they have so much to offer. He believed in a rational approach to Judaism. I stand on his shoulders, and I take what he taught me and try to apply that to the modern world. And so I've created a modern version of the 23rd Psalm, which I would like to share for you before the reading of the Kaddish. This modern version cherishes this world without believing or focusing on a world that cannot be proven a world to come. This world is majestic and magnificent and is enough to inspire my awe and my reverence. With that in mind, I've written this 23rd Psalm. The world is my treasure, I shall not want. I give thanks for green pastures that provide our daily bread. I rejoice in the sacred waters of ocean, rivers, lakes, and streams, the sources of life. May we restore their purity for the earth's sake. I seek the spiritual path and the peace of a good name. Yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of mortality, I shall fear no evil. For reason and love they comfort me, and I have no need of false gods. My enemies are no more when I make them my friends. My mind is anointed with reason. My Yiddish cup runneth over with emmet, and my heart rejoices with tzedek. Surely I shall pursue kindness and mercy all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the abode of love and peace. Yiskedal v'yiskedash shemer abba. V'yalma divrach ruse v'yamlich ma'chuse. V'chayachon uv'yomechon uv'chayye d'chol beis Yisrael. V'agalav izman kari v'yimru amen. Yehe shemer abba mi'vorach la'olam o'meol ma'ya. 
ויספורך, ויסתבך, ויספואר, ויסחומם, ויסנעשה, ויסדר, ויסלה, ויסלה, שמיל קדושו בריחו, לאלה מנקור ברכוסה ושירוסה, תוש בכוסה ונחמסה, דעם ירון ויאמר ויאמרו אמן, יהי שלום הרבה מן שמעיה וחיים עלינו ויוקו ישראל ויאמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ויוקו ישראל ויאמרו אמן. And now the priestly benediction. יבורך אחרוני וישמורך, may you be blessed and protected on your journey through life. יחרוני פניו אליך וחונקה, may the light of reason and the light of love shine from you and shine upon you always. יישא אדוני פניו אליך ויישם לך שלום. May you be able to use our prodigious minds and our loving hearts in order to lift you up to the highest level that we know how to achieve, a level in which we are sources of peace, of justice, and of love. Amen. My friends, it's been a pleasure to share Shabbat with you. I look forward to seeing you next week on, in cyberspace. And perhaps, hopefully, if you're in my geographical area, in person. I wish you well for this week, and I hope that you will contact us at Lador Vador if you would like to share any of your thoughts and ideas about how we can build the future of Judaism together today. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>